Love you. No, you don't. Elder Howard, for the record, you can stay up here anytime, any any moment you want. Before before we get started this evening, I got something that I want to show you. Uh, it's a real short clip. Um, back in the day, I used to be a big Seinfeld fan. And uh, Seinfeld, I, I just find real funny. I think he's a com com comedic genius, you know. But um, I just wanted to share this with you, and then we're going to get right into it. it. You know, it's Woody Allen. Did I mention that? Yeah, we yeah. got it. We got it. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with Woody, and uh, I say, I turn to him, and I go, uh, boy, these pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> Is that how you're going to say it? No, no, I'm working on it. Do it like this. These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. No, no, see, that's no good. See, you don't know how to act. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> oh, that was no good? I didn't say anything. You know, with, uh, with, with all the negativity going around in this fallen, evil world, say it with me, it's okay to laugh. Okay to laugh. Right? Amen? As long as nobody's getting hurt, right? As long as it's, it's in good humor. Um, I, I just uh, appreciate laughter so much. Um, we are going to be in John 4 this evening. And um, when, I, when, I, when, when Holy Spirit gave me the title of this, immediately I thought about Seinfeld. Am I in a safe place tonight? Can I confess this to you? All right. So, yeah, I don't think of, like, always, you know, biblical, you know, people and, you know, all these, you know, Old Testament characters. I thought of Seinfeld, these pretzels. And I heard Holy Spirit say that. And so I just started watching that clip over and over again, just laughing. And it was just me in my prayer room laughing with the Lord. And I just kept on saying, these pretzels are making me thirsty. These pretzels are making me thirsty. These pretzels are making me thirsty, right? How do you say it? How would you say it? I like that. Praise God. Sister Melissa, did you just do it? It was you, sis? Let's do it again. All right, so it's just plain and simple, right? How about somebody who's like over the top? Will somebody take that with me? Huh? You got one over the top? All right. Oh, there you go. Hey, hallelujah. Let's give God praise on that. Amen. <laughs> we, we all need to drink more water. Can you get an amen? So as we were laughing and having a good time and, you know, just going over these pretzels and making thirsty, then all of a sudden, I, I heard Holy Spirit just stop laughing. And then I knew, okay, it's time to get serious. And then this is what he gave me, which is the real title of tonight. These sins are making me thirsty. These sins are making me thirsty. If I may, I'll show you this. This is my life before I received Jesus Christ as my Lord. And the water resembles, you know, this feeling of trying to feel happy, trying to feel fulfilled, trying to feel, trying to feel joy, right? Don't, don't, don't we all go through those seasons where we, we wonder, why am I not so happy? You know, wh why am I always crunchy? I'm not a crunchy person, but why am I crunchy? Well, there's things going on, right? And once again, I'm just confessing and showing you what my life was like before Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this was my bucket. This is my, you know, this is me, I mean, in the form of a bucket. And what I was struggling with is just pride, unforgiveness, religion, worry, hatred, lust, greed, haughtiness, jealousy, insecurity. That's a big one. And then I sum it up again. Yes, we opened with pride, but pride. It, 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 that pride is that seed that produces all this kind of fruit, right? Now, I, I have this question a lot because... People don't know, and it's a really great question, and I feel Holy Spirit says to, to just expose it right now. 
I hear a lot, especially ministering to people, that how do I know that I'm prideful? Isn't that a great question? Like, how do I know that I'm being prideful? And, and, and I love that question because it's challenging because it gets, it gets us into a deeper conversation, right? And normally my follow-up conversation is, well, why do you ask that type of question? What are you struggling with? What, what are you struggling with, right? And then you, you, you get to hear follow-up answers like, well, I just, you know, I just don't have the, the patience with my wife. Why not? Why, why do you not have patience with the one that God blessed you with so that you could show the relationship in, in Christ through your marriage? You know, what's going on? Well, I don't understand what's going on. I just don't have any patience. And then Holy Spirit was, will have me ask questions. Was there any transgression? Did your husband or did your wife ever hurt you or you as a husband, did you ever hurt her? In a way. And nine out of ten times, tears start to. Yeah, I did her wrong. And ever since then, it's never been right. And I would tell that, that person, you need to get forgiveness from God. Oh, I have. There's pride. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I have already. That's pride. Because if you have already, then your life would show his glory and it would show the heart of repentance. And you would have more patience because you have repented of those sins. And so I say this to you because I'm speaking in more of a general sense. Uh, you know, I'm trying not to make it so um, detailed because people are nosy like me. Right? I'm nosy. Don't leave a door cracked open. I'll look in it. I'm just that kind of guy, right? If people are arguing down at Walmart, I'll walk over there. I don't care how many aisles. I'm like, man, what's going on over here? You know, I'm just that kind of brother. You know what I mean? Not, I am nosy. I, pr I confess it. Pray for me. Are we in a safe place? Pray for me. But, of course, when I'm going over there, I'm like, man, I'm going to pray over somebody. I'm going to break it up. Right? I'm not going to go there just so I could tweet about it. Or I don't tweet anyway, but you know what I mean? I don't do any social media. But So my point is this, is that when you're in pride... Pride likes to blind you, and you think that you're always right. Even when you are laying down destruction and hurting people around you, or completely hurting, God forbid, Holy Spirit inside of you. That's how you know when you're in pride. Now, everybody put a smile on your face, because I'm not picking on you. What I'm saying is, we have a God that he loves you. Regardless of your pride, he just cannot flow through you because pride is blocking his anointing. If we can get rid of that, oh, hallelujah. If we can truly repent, like, I'm so sorry. And I want to tell you, many of these guys having to do with these marriage counselings that we're, we're into, they truly have repented. And you see the fruit instantaneously. And guess what? I'm not just picking on the men, women, right? Wives have that too, amen. But we, 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 have to, we have to come to terms looking at this and saying, is that me? Right? Now I will tell you, there are times when I fall, I fail every day. Even as I stand here and I tell you for five years that I make mistakes, that I hurt people, that I... I have people say, oh, it's okay, you, you know, we love you, we're, we're, we're one body, you, 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 you're, you're my pastor and you're my brother and I love you. But the, once the mistake affects you, how are we going to act? Is that not the truth? How are you going to respond to it? Will you respond the way Jesus responds? Or will you respond in pride? What is pride? Rah! I can't believe. I, you, you, I hate the way you smell. What does that have to do with anything? You know what I mean? It's like, golly, you're just trying to hurt me now. Right? But isn't that what pride does? They just want to nitpick. Right? And if we're not careful, there's one hole in that bucket that says insecurities. 
This is going to be the heart of this message tonight as far as dealing with insecurities. Remember, these sins will make you thirsty. Is it possible for that bucket ever to be filled in that condition? You're always going to be thirsty. And guess what? If you don't take care of this, I love you, Brother Gary. I ain't talking to you now, okay? I'm talking to the whole church now, okay? We just live in a weird climate now, so I got to make sure. Pray for me, amen? We live in such an evil world. The very people that tell me they got my back, they love me and all this stuff are the very ones that, Ugh! You okay? Yeah, because you know, right? And guess what? Forgive them, pray for them, love them, bless them. They'll most likely do it again. But guess what? The Bible says you just keep on forgiving them. Why? Because when we react and show the fruits of repentance, the fruits that I'm not that person no longer. Because I'm aware, Holy Spirit, that you live in me. I'm aware, Lord Jesus Christ, that you own me. That you died for me. I'm aware. See, a lot of us claim to be aware. Right? But the test is, is when something comes your way that challenges who you believe in. See, if you believe in Jesus, the fruits of your reaction is going to be out of love. But if you believe in yourself, the fruits of your reaction is, why are you going to do that to me? What about me? Look at me. I did this. I did that. You know, that's just a bunch of baloney. Because that's all pride. Even me standing here before you, Holy Spirit's doing everything good. Anything bad that you see, pray for me. Pray for me. Help me. Amen. So how many are you, John 4? Who have, you, if you have your Bibles, you got John 4 up? I'm going to go quickly on this, okay? Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. This was the religious folks now, right? Praise God. Do we got any religious folks in this house? Do we have worshipers in this house? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back one more, once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so when he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried as he was from the, uh, he was tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well, it was about noon. Amen. Now, for those of you who haven't lived in like a desert type of area, um, during the summertime and uh, when the sun's out, say this with me, hot. And I'm talking about a hot. It ain't like the hot out here in Kentucky. We're blessed. Now, here in my heart, I don't, I don't like it. It does get kind of hot out here. And I kind of get a little crunchy about that because it, it does get kind of hot. But when you lived in the desert, we lived in El Paso. We did ministry out there in a church plant for four years in El Paso, Texas. And I kid you not, you could step out your house and walk to your car and you could just feel your skin cooking. You know, like bacon frying. You could like hear that, like what the? And it, 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 it's, just, it's just a whole nother level of hot. You know, is, is that what dry heat? Is that what they call it? The, oh, my goodness. From the pit, right? I say that to you because you can just imagine how uncomfortable that is, right? But this beloved daughter of God would go to this well during this time of the day. Is that normal? And I'm glad. Many of you know this story. Many of you know that what they did back in the day is they would go before the crack of dawn. You know, beautiful time, right? It's nice and cool. You see the sun come up, birds chirping, right? I don't know if they got birds out there, but I'm just saying. I hear birds, so, right? And it's just like, it's just like a Disney movie, right? You just, oh, it's just, you know, talking with people, right? Karen, what you got going on today? Oh, nothing. I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, Get the kids over and we're going to have a good time. Okay, well, 
Bob, what you up to? You know, just talking to the community, right? But this beloved daughter did not do that. This beloved daughter would go at the hottest point of the day. Why do you think that? Oh, preach, sis. That's the bottom line. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want nobody to ask my business. You know, last time I was there, Karen made fun of me. Right? Why would you subject yourself, right, to go to a place where you just have all this insecurity? Right? And let's, t let's move more. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Is that not powerful? I mean, there's always racism in the world. Do you, do, do you not agree? I mean, I'm just going to tell you right now, as a person of color, I've never lived in such a place where not only black people but white people they feel weird around me. See, I grew up in diversity. I grew up in San Diego, California. I grew up around black folks, around Asians, you know, you could talk Cambodians, um, Vietnamese, and we were all in the community. And so guess what? Growing up that way, regardless what the color of your skin was, hey, what's your name? You know what I mean? Hey, let's be friends, you know, and, and I love kids because that's how they are. You know, I believe racism is taught. Can you get an Amen. It is. It's, it's out of the ignorance from the insecurities of the parents or the grandparents. And unfortunately, that demon just trickles on. Say it with me, no more. Well, guess what? Back then, you could read it right here. This beloved daughter is like, why are you talking to me? I'm this race and you're that race. And you all, don't be, you, you all shouldn't even recognize me or even talk to me. Can you believe that? Like, it's almost to the point of offense. How dare you ask me for a drink? When you know how far back the hatred goes, right? You really want to get ghetto with this? Oh, I know what your cousin did to my uncle. And oh, right? You start bringing in family members, right? Oh, come on now. Am I preaching now? Yeah. Kentucky don't got no family issues. All the families get along here. So it doesn't matter what your last name is. Is that what you're trying to tell me tonight? Or is it just me? Right? What, what is that? It's taught. It's taught. It's taught as gospel. Oh, you don't go around them. Oh, their great, great, great granddaddy did, did, did our granddaddy wrong. What? How many of you was ever in that situation growing up? Huh? Be honest with God. Right? And you, you, you found yourself not liking a certain person because of the story someone tells you. Are you feeling me? And you could just imagine, my heart goes out to this beloved daughter of God because here she is in the hottest part of the day, just trying to do her business, not wanting to talk to nobody. Remember that now, right? That's why she's there when it's 110. And here is our God, our Jesus, our Lord, our Master, our Savior sitting there. And you know he was, you know that he knew that he was going to come across a beloved daughter of God. You know that he knew, I'm going to come across one of the most powerful evangelists at this very moment. Right? And so what happens, well, let's move on. I, I, I'm sorry, I had a picture up there for you. If you knew the gift of God and who it is to ask for you a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Say it with me, living water. And I love that picture because they're just having that conversation. So here Jesus is. He is love. Amen. Remember, love has a name. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. His, his name is Lord Jesus Christ. And here is God's love, God's heart, God's everything sitting at that well. And here he is just looking through a beloved daughter of God. Can I get an amen? amen? Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? Who say it with me, watch out now. Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? 
Jesus answered, check this out, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them, say it with me, in me, a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Hallelujah. Let's just give God praise because that's you. That's you, beloved of God. That's you. Amen. And so I, I love this picture because, as you guys know, I have my own captions running in my head. And I've asked Holy Spirit, so he's, he's allowed me to say all this. But you can just imagine the exchange that has taken place at this very moment. You could just imagine as far as what was the heart condition of this beloved daughter. For the first time, did she feel that there was hope? For the first time, did she feel, you know what? This world isn't reality. My God is the only reality. For the first time, did she feel, I actually feel comfortable talking to this person. I've never felt this way with any other man, but I could feel like I can open up to you. I say all these awesome things about our God because of the fact that he lives in us now. Holy Spirit lives in us now. And the beauty about our God is he just wants you to be open as far as what, what you're going through. What, what's, what's bothering you? But here in my heart. Is God a one-way relationship type of, type of God? Does he force himself on you? When God speaks to you, he expects a relationship. He expects for you to take action. He expects to hear you speak his word. Amen? I love it because... The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have, I have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I love this part. Go call your husband and come back. Check this out. I have no husband. I have no husband. Do you, do you, do you sense as far as the attitude behind this? Where it's like, you think you're all that. Telling me all this stuff. Then you're going to tell me to go to my husband. I don't have a husband. Correction. Do you feel it? Right? Because here's our precious Lord. Here's our precious Lord telling her all the truth about God and who he is. And what he's here to do. He's here to die for us. He's here to raise again. And he's here to send Holy Spirit. So... They all three live inside of you, amen? And then what, what happens? Go get your husband. I don't have a husband. But isn't it just like us, though, when God asks us to do something, we're quick either to correct God or to make excuses? Isn't it, though? Maybe I'm the only one tonight. Right? That maybe Father God will say, you know what? Go visit that person. Well, you know, I would, but I ain't got no gas money this week. And um, that needle is riding around that, that E part. Now, I have faith, and I wish it was at the F part, because for faith. But it's hovering around the E, and what does, right? Can we not be uh, the, 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 the children of God that can have faith that I'll go and You'll fill up my tank as, as I drive. I love being surrounded by lions. Amen. Am I surrounded by lions tonight? Amen. I love being surrounded by lions. Hallelujah. Surround yourself with lions. Amen. Surround yourself with people that are for you, not against you. Can I get an amen? Jesus said to her, you're right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is, you have had five husbands. Do it, do it with me. Dun, dun, dun. Do it better. Dun, dun, dun. You could just imagine the look on her face. 
You have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Oh, come on now. Because she got called out. Now, okay, I can see that, yeah, I can see that you're a prophet. You, you, you come from God. Because you done called all my business out. And now you're speaking the truth. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we worship is in Jerusalem. I love that look on her face. Uh-huh. You nailed it. You nailed it, sis. You nailed it. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me. Can you say that with me? Believe me. A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You, Samaritan, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers, say it with me, that's me. True worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Beloved children of God. Beloved children of God. Beloved church family. Does that not just blow your mind that God of the universe is always scanning the entire world? How many of you played hide and go seek? Right? If you played it like me, you just, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hundred. I never counted. I, I mean, pray for me. I probably still won't count correctly. It's too much pressure. I need to find you. Right? So you're it. So I tag you, you're it, right? <laughs> but don't you love it? Listen, I'm a child. I'm a big child, praise God. Don't you love it at Daddy God? Amen, brother? I <laughs> love you, brother Aaron. Don't you love it at Daddy God is always seeking? And here you are. You said it, I am. That you worship him in the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that his spirit reigns inside of your body, inside of your mind, in your actions. That you're continuously, hallelujah, you're continuously just overflowing in Holy Spirit's presence. That you want to come together. You're here on a Wednesday night. You want to come together with God's people. To love and encourage, right? To be there for people. Why? Because that's what Lord Jesus Christ paid for. Right? For us to be his hands and his feet. But before you can be his hand and his feet... You need, to have, you need to have him in your heart, right? And I love it because this is where we're getting at right now in this story. Lord Jesus sums it up and says, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And this is what Lord Jesus said. I, the one speaking to you, say with me, I am he. Imagine Holy Spirit's already flowing that way in the conversation that some of you are having. You can imagine not only the revelation that this beloved daughter got when he spoke those words, but just the pure joy, the pure excitement. Finally, finally, my God, you saved me. You came to where I come to hide met me where I was at. I didn't have to go to some place to find you. You met me where I was at. And you love me. And even though I have all these sins that I've done, you called them all out, but you still say with me, you love me. And so when you move forward from this, Jesus, this is the point that we want to highlight through this entire message in, in, in verse 13. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them, I will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them, say with me, in me, a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Amen.
about our God is this. Lord Jesus Christ died, rose again. And that was the symbol of that bucket. You see, that bucket went into that well. But what it did is it went to the pits of hell. And that only bucket from God, say it with me, the only way. He came back up through God by the power of Holy Spirit. But this time, this bucket didn't come back empty. Amen. And here's the beauty about this. This is what Lord Jesus Christ promised. He says, I will give you this living water. And so imagine this, that God pours out through Christ in Holy Spirit. He is the living water. And Christ says, I will provide this, but if you drink it, if you drink it, say it with me, if you drink it, this means, check this out, there's Jesus, right? But what did Jesus say? never thirst again if you worship me if you worship me if you make this part of your existence in this vapor of life that you worship me will you take this drink will you drink from me you see we live right now in such an evil world where people are preaching there's Jesus there's Jesus Dina look there's Jesus and people who are blind are like, okay, there's Jesus. And then guess what? Here we are in church, right? And the sad part is, the way many of the people are getting filled is, look at this. Jesus did this for me. Look what I'm going to do. Say with me, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Now look at this. This is the anointing of Holy Spirit in me now, right? But this is how churches are starting to transform. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is not the way God wanted it. People come to church, some of them empty, some of them half full, some of them like this and they expect me or a pastor to go well here you go here you go there 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 you go question my beloved Ryan if you came up here and drink that will you get thirsty again because there's only one source source and this is what father is saying you come to me just as you are you come to me just as you are and you ask me and I will give you the drink you see we have 24 7 this but what God is saying is will you take me in amen will we take him in tonight Y'all would stand up on your feet with me. There's only one perfect man. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And he is head over heels in love with you. And he wants nothing more than for tonight to be a night that there's breakthrough, that there's revelation in your life. He's asking for an offering. Amen. He's, hallelujah, praise you, Lord. Hear, hear me now. I'm not talking about financial. You guys can relax. I'm not talking about your money. I'm not. He's asking an offering that some of you have been holding on for years. Maybe it's that unforgiveness. Right? Maybe it's the hurt that was done to you. You're purely innocent. Listen. God Almighty knows that you're innocent. But he's saying what the devil has done to you. You're carrying this burden.
that we have no right to because he paid for it on that cross. Will you be like the woman at the well? You see, the story continues on where she left. She left her bucket. She went into town and started telling everybody about a God that loves her. About a God that saw through her and saw everything good in her. I pray that you know that right now, that God sees everything good in you. We're the only ones that see the bad. Why? The devil wants us to see it. You're looking at me like, how can you say that, Brother Joey? That's who God is. He's good and perfect, and he's for you, and he loves you. And he's asking you, will you just come and allow me to fill you? Will you take the drink tonight? Will you say, Holy Spirit, I want your presence in my life. I want your presence to overflow mightily in me. That, Father God, wherever I go, there's not going to be a soul that's thirsty that they could feel and see your presence and that I can tell them, call on the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Call on the name of Lord Jesus Christ. You think that I got anything special? His name is Holy Spirit and he wants to be inside of you. Can I get an amen? Are we all good tonight? I pray that tonight that we can just come to this altar and just leave it all. Amen.